successful radio DJ Chris Hawkins appears to have it all. A glamorous career, a lovely house and a beautiful weather girl wife. But Chris hides a guilty secret. For the past 21 years, he's been addicted to junk food. I drink a lot and I go out a lot and I eat junk food out a lot. Pretty much everything that is bad for me. The reason Chris guzzles junk food is because he's petrified of fruit and vegetables. He can't look at or touch them or even say their names. The thought of ever eating fruit and vegetables makes me feel physically sick. <coughs> I would say it's a phobia. Unless Chris changes his ways, he faces a lifetime of emasculating health problems. Men get testicular atrophy, which means their testicles become smaller, their breasts become bigger. Getting him to face his fears will be the job of clinical psychologist Stephen Bryars and nutritionist Natalie Savona. Natalie will be putting her foot down and encouraging Chris to try new foods. Oh, I can feel it oozing. While Stephen will try to persuade Chris that overcoming his phobias needs a giant leap of faith. Jesus! But turning Chris from a terrified phobic to a full-on foodie isn't going to be easy. Easy. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. Radio DJ Chris Hawkins lives in London. At only 31, Chris has secured top slots on two of the capital's premier radio stations, LBC and BBC Radio 6. Hello, good morning, and uh, welcome to Wednesday. People think being a DJ is the most glamorous job in the world, where you get paid loads of money for just sitting and putting records on. You don't get paid loads of money, but you do get to sit and play your favourite records on the radio, which I think is just the biggest privilege in the world. Chris lives in a beautiful home with his wife, Claire, a GMTV weather girl. He might appear to have an enviable life, but there's just one problem. Chris's diet is a nutritional nightmare of junk food, takeaways, coffee and booze. Because I work really strange hours, you tend to eat whatever's quickest and easiest. It means I'm drinking lots and lots of coffee to stay awake and I eat junk food a lot. But all of the time, it's just stuff that most people would consider unhealthy. Chris's poor diet is the result of an embarrassing secret. He's terrified of fruit and vegetables. I hate even saying fruit and vegetables. It's just stuff to me. And it's stuff that I don't like. And that in itself sounds ridiculous, I know. In restaurants, Claire has to remove all fresh produce from Chris's plate. He can only bear to eat the meat if vegetables haven't touched it. When we moved in together, I realised he had an issue because the fruit bowl was never on the table. It was stuffed in the airing cupboard. He literally used to just chip it out and put all the fruit in the bin. What's that? I don't want to look at it. Oh, and you know that I don't. People don't perceive a phobia of fruit and vegetables as a problem. Quite bizarrely, they, they just think, you're a fatty eater and you're a bit fussy. I find that quite irritating. I find it irritating to the point of, like, wanting to punch someone in the face. To counter the effects of his high-fat, high-sugar diet, Chris splashes out on a personal trainer. But despite all the hard work, he can't shift the extra pounds and worries about his health. I feel like I'm in control of every other aspect of my life, good and bad. But with this, it's way out of my control. And I'd like it to change. It's day one of Chris's month-long dietary makeover. And he's been summoned to London's Leicester Square for his first meeting with the experts. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hi, Steve. I'm Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Nice to meet you, Chris. So, what brings you here on a beautiful day like this? It's gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> uh, if I wasn't nervous enough, um, it had to be raining as well. So, feeling a little tense about this? Yeah, very tense, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? really. It's all right, we'll be, we'll be gentle. I hope so. <laughs> all right, well, to help you start on that journey, we've got something we want to show you. All right, so if you want to come with us, okay. we'll take care right. of this. Thank come you. Come on. Before they begin their work, Natalie and Stephen have a surprise for Chris, which they hope will focus his mind. Dealing with these kind of issues can feel like a pretty lonely business, but you're not on your own. 
There are a lot of other people who are both affected by what's happening to you and who care about you. And we want to show you some of their thoughts and comments to try and help keep you motivated. OK. My name's Claire Nazir. I'm married to the lovely Chris Hawkins. And it's been two and a half years of domestic bliss, apart from this one little thing. You know, I bring in chocolate and donuts into the studio. It's not just me being nice. The other reason is the fact that you seem to get these massive energy drops. And I just know that that little chocolate bar and the odd donut really keeps you focused on the show. And I just think it'd be great if I didn't have to do that because I'm eating them with you and I'm getting fat too. 15 years I've known you now, and 15 years you've been completely committed to everything you've ever been involved with. What I really hope now is that you can give the same commitment to this. Having suffered with a phobia myself, I understand it quite well. Getting through the problem is quite a challenge, but I'm sure you're capable of the challenge. we just love you to be able to sit down for a family meal, Christmas dinner, it'd be great. We love you. A lot of people would never go down this route. Facing a phobia is a really hard thing to do, but I know you're going to go all the way, and I'll be with you all the way as well. I love you. How are you, how are you feeling at the moment, watching that? Do you know what? I actually find it even more embarrassing hearing what people have got to say on the subject. Your dad mentioned that he had a phobia. What phobia did he have? My dad's phobia is of dead matches. Even if I said dead matches in his company, I know that it would make him sort of go all sort of inward or whatever. Uh, and, and that's exactly how I feel. I know, that, I know that the reaction is the same. I'm not surprised you can relate to that or indeed he can relate to what you're going through. I'm sitting here now feeling really, really like, this is definitely the right thing to be doing, but at the same time a little unsure as to, as to how, 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 how it can possibly change. Chris, shall we just get out of here for now? And what I'd like to do, really, is to have a look at what it is you are eating. OK. Come on, then. All right. Natalie and Stephen have an all-too-familiar surprise for Chris, which they hope will shock him into action. What have we here, Chris? My lunch and, and dinner in a quite overwhelming fashion. It is as though you are still a student, even though you're nearly 32. Yeah. We've actually worked out what you're eating in the year. You're having equivalent of 400 pizzas, 125 portions of chips, and that's not even counting all the sugary junk that you're shoving in you as well. This is all really scary and overwhelming because this is proper reality bites, reality. The thing is that it's not just the problem with what you are eating. Mm. It's what you're missing out on that's pretty fundamental. If you were having that much equivalent in brown rice and broccoli, you fair, winced fair there. <laughs> yeah, um, because even mention of some of the, the names of the, the things that I don't like makes me cringe. You'll notice I never actually mention anything by name, refer to most things that I don't like as stuff. We do have something we want to show you, and I'm conscious that because of the way you feel, this is going to be not easy for you, all right? But yeah. Matt does want to show you. All right? Mm. OK. That's my worst nightmare. All right. You can look it's, at me It's for the really moment. unpleasant to both to look at and, and the smell you as well. You can smell it. Unpleasant though it sounds, I could vomit. Yeah. I'd like to walk away right now. All right. Now, where do you want to get to? at the end of that four weeks? The ultimate would be to eat like a normal person and to be able to sit down for a family meal and, and eat the same as everybody else. So our challenge to you should be that at the end of this process, you're going to be able to sit down with your family and eat a meal that contains some fruit and veg, all right? I, my stomach's sinking at the thought of it. It's a serious, serious phobia. It's a complete aversion where he can't even bear to look at these things. He can't bear even to say the words. So Stephen can work on that side of it, but how I actually get him any closer to putting these foods in his mouth... <laughs> right now, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with him. Chris now has just one month to overcome his freaky eating problem. I think when the fridge door opened and I was forced to look at all the fruit and vegetables, it rammed home to me that this is not going to be easy. 
And that was the most significant reminder that actually this is going to be what one heck of a journey. Today is Chris's first one-to-one -one session with nutritionist Natalie, and it seems her reputation has preceded her as Chris gets some last-minute jitters. I'm feeling pretty nervous now, and I'm scared about meeting Natalie because there's something quite intimidating about her. I'm beginning to think that this was just a very, very bad idea. Today, I need to find out how far I can comfortably push him so that he'll succeed rather than be put off for good. Hi, Chris. Come on in. Thank you. So I'd like you to just have a seat there. You don't really want to be here, do you? No. You can't even bring your chair closer to the table. No. What's going on? I'm getting really hot. Sorry, is that OK? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm getting hot. I'm feeling the smell is becoming overwhelming to the point where I want to get up and walk away. <coughs> <coughs> is that just coughing, or is that you sort of starting to feel a bit sick? I'm feeling a bit sick, yeah. Why am I putting myself through this? Why am I putting myself through something that I dislike? You're killing yourself. I <laughs> guess. That's like putting... That's making me feel guilty. That, that's... You're doing it. Yeah, but you're making... You're laying that on really thick, you know? I'm not laying it on extra thick. Let me get rid of all of these. OK, so in the vein of you saying you really do want to change things, do you think you could pick one of those up? And do what with it? Just hold it in your hand. <laughs> I've never... <laughs> All we're doing right now is holding a spear of asparagus. OK. So you're having to psych yourself up? That's exactly what I'm doing, yeah. So when have you ever held a vegetable before? This is kids first. Why don't you put it back? <laughs> That's great. As Chris makes no further progress in the 90-minute session, Natalie's prepared a series of tasks he'll have to carry out at home. What I've got is your healthy hamper. And inside here is me jumping out at you every few days, so to speak. Very scary thought. Thanks. <laughs> I don't understand why Chris is scared of me. <laughs> me? I think, actually, he's scared of what I represent, which is the person who's going to nudge him to try certain foods. And he doesn't really want to do that. Something inside his cells is saying, no, don't go there. Back at home, Chris wastes no time getting down to his homework. This is a scary basket from, from Scary Natalie. This is my homework. Um, um, asparagus in there. Along with a spear of asparagus, Natalie has enclosed some written instructions. I want you to hold this for five minutes today and 15 minutes the next day. I want you to do the same with the fruit of your choice. OK. <laughs> I don't want to open the basket. I'll do the asparagus thing, but I think I'll do the fruit. I just, I just don't think I'll do it. Even if that means just lying to her for the sake of not having her tell me off, then that's, I'd rather that. But I'll do the asparagus thing. OK. I'm going to hold it for five minutes. I don't know how I'm benefiting and that's how I feel at the moment. At this moment in time, I feel stupid, embarrassed and a bit sick. OK, well, that's it for today. He may have held the asparagus, 
but it doesn't bode well that Chris has washed his hands of Natalie's instructions to hold an orange. As a four-year-old, Chris had no problem with food. He enjoyed a comfortable upbringing in Shrewsbury with his parents and his two younger sisters. When his eating problems began aged five, the cause was a mystery to his father, a high-flying company director who'd worked hard to provide every luxury for his family. Chris's phobia has been discussed as a family matter on many occasions. We cannot pinpoint any reason why Chris developed a phobia for eating vegetables or fruit. When aged 11, he enrolled at a top boarding school, Chris's disgust of fresh food turned to actual fear. Chris's mom and I did talk to Chris about his eating habits as he was growing up. But unfortunately, as Chris moved away from home, we basically lost control of what fruit or vegetables he did eat. Chris excelled in both sport and exams, but by adulthood, he was more phobic than ever, and no one knew why. Today, clinical psychologist Stephen Breyers will probe Chris's memories in an attempt to get to the bottom of his food phobia. All right, Chris, do you want to tell me how long this has been a problem for you? What are your earliest memories of it? I don't actually remember being any other way. So it's always been very, very difficult to know where it all stems from. All right, and what kind of child were you? Grew up in the country, had good friends and a great home life. And then my dad would work, say, 15, 16 hours a day as, as, as a kid. I barely saw him. OK. So, so really, your mother was the person who did most of the yeah, looking after yeah. you. Now, I know that your dad has a specific phobia. Mm -hmm. um, what about on your mum's side? No, my mum was a worrier. She's a pretty anxious person, but not phobic. Right. What about you? Are you a worrier? Yeah, for sure, yeah. I think I worry about most things day to day. Um, I would I'd, I'd say verging on paranoid. I worry about being late, get annoyed if a bus doesn't come when I need to get a bus. But it sounds as if you're talking about things that are to do with the external world that sometimes feel beyond your immediate yeah, control. Yeah, I guess, I guess so, yeah. OK. When you're faced with fruit and veg, how does it make you feel? I'm uncomfortable, really really severely uncomfortable at times. OK. But you'd be amazed how little you end up in those situations if you know there's a way of avoiding that situation. But in the time that you've become more skilled at avoiding these situations, has your fear got worse or better? I think it's got worse. Mm. The more control of my life I've had, the more anti I've become. Well, timing is everything. And I hope that, you know, you're ready for this change. I'm as positive as I could be, right? But, you know, I, I remain, with all due respect, a little sceptical. Sure. Chris is obviously someone who grew up around some anxieties. And what this means is that Chris may have inherited anxious tendencies from both parents and increased his need to feel in control. Restricting his diet is one way that Chris may have made himself feel more powerful and therefore a bit less anxious. Reflecting on his session with Stephen brings out some uncomfortable home truths for Chris. I realised when I was talking to Stephen that I've never really opened up to anyone before. He'd got kind of a hold on me. I didn't like that feeling. I want to be in control of, of how this situation progresses. I want to be in charge of whether I eat fruit or vegetables or not. Chris is unwilling to cede control to the experts. But his wife, Claire, is still doing her best to help as they tackle a plate of fruit together. It really annoys me that I can't eat that. Would you like to eat it? Thing is, sometimes I think, no, I don't want, no, why would I want to? Will you kiss me once I've put one in my mouth? I can't think of very much I'd like to do less. And they just taste like a juice, but just a bit more solid. It's just the, uh, the texture of it. Could you pick one of those up and give it to me? No. Can you give me the plate? Oh, you've got the plate there. No, no, but if you put it there, would you give it to me? Give it to my hand. So just... Can you give it me the, give me the plate? Well, then. Scared? <laughs> I think that fruit is, is difficult. I am really concerned that, that this is all going to fail. And 
I'm really loath to say that. And I am now less than 100% convinced that I am actually going to be able to, to follow this through. Whilst Chris struggles on trying to break down his fear of fruit and veg, Natalie is keen to know what a diet absent of the vital vitamins and nutrients they supply has been doing to Chris's insides. She summoned him to Harley Street for the result of his blood tests. I'm pretty anxious. There's no reason why there would, there would be anything bad. Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a special interest in eating problems. She's analysed the results of Chris's blood tests and this morning he and Natalie have come to hear her findings. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do you, you want to have a seat? Thank you, Thank you. yeah. You worried? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I am, yeah. If you say, you've probably got about four hours. You know, make the, most of them, <laughs> make the most of them the, the next half that. a day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating like that. Being sensible about it. Now, we did find, when we tested your blood, that your liver is actually overstretched. Now, the job of your liver is to take in all the toxins in your body, break them down, keep the good stuff, get rid of the bad stuff. But obviously, like every organ or every processing factory, if you give it too much processed food, too much alcohol, too much caffeine, it's got to overwork. It's overstretched, unfortunately. How, how, how bad is it? It's about 50% more than it should be. Yeah. Do you know anything about liver disease or...? I haven't got liver disease. You haven't got liver disease, but you've got a liver that's working very, very hard at the moment. Dr Pixie has brought along some of Chris's favourite foods to illustrate the strain he's putting on his liver. So what I'd like you to do is pour some of these onto our artificial liver here. Yeah, curry first. Ooh. Dr Pixie's model reacts to liquid in the same way a real liver reacts to Chris's high-fat, high-toxin diet by gradually swelling. OK, so nice fatty curry. Mmm. I think you need a bit of wine to wash that down. Oh. A bit of coffee in the morning because you're hungover. See the way it's expanding. Oh, yeah. What a thought. Yeah. The liver is the largest internal organ in the body. The cells that make up 60% of the liver tissue are called heptatic cells and carry out more chemical processes than any other group of cells. Over the long term, Chris's cells could become saturated with toxins as they struggle to detoxify his blood. If that happens, the liver will swell, then harden, and eventually start to shrivel. This potentially fatal condition is known as cirrhosis of the liver. Dr Pixie's results are a bitter pill for Chris to swallow. If the liver expands and is capable of expanding, why is it bad? It's been given the potential to expand in response to normal stresses. Right. But what you're doing is you're putting in stresses every single day of the week and your liver is going to keep expand and expand and expand. And then parts of it start to break down. The other problems are that because it knocks out testosterone levels in your blood, men get testicular atrophy, which means their testicles become smaller, their breasts become bigger. Bloody hell, this, this means that I have got... Oh, I was really hoping that... You were hoping that I was going to say you're fine. Fine, yeah, and that, um, yeah. You were hoping to walk out of here saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix That's it. exactly what I, I was saying. I can carry on as I am, and you're going to yeah. put the finger up at me, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Chris got a big fright with that liver test result, but I'm still not convinced that he's actually going to do anything with that fear. I think he's going to put his head back in the sand and use all the excuses in the world, go back to being Mr. Charming, good-looking, media man and live the lifestyle that he's been living that's already got him into trouble because I'm not really convinced that he wants to change. Seeing the doctor today was just part of this process, you know, and um, I don't want to get too, like, anxious about it because um, I, I'm capable of just chucking the towel and saying, forget it, you know, I'll deal with it on, on myself. An anxious Claire calls to find out Chris's results. Hi. Hello, any news? Yeah, I, um, my liver is working 50% harder than it should do. What? It's not life-threatening in any way. Not yet, no. No. So this is more than incentive, I suppose, isn't it? This is the biggest reason so far. With Natalie making progress, Stephen wants to find out more about Chris's dance phobia to see if it's had any impact on Chris's problem with food. 
Obviously, Chris's dad has got an unusual phobia of his own, but I don't think of itself that's sufficient to explain Chris's difficulties. My theory about Chris is that his eating problems stem from a more general need to be in control of every area of his life, and that includes his diet. But before I go down this route, I need to seek confirmation from one of the people who probably understands Chris's problem the best, and that is his father, Mike. I'm aware that you have a phobia of your own. Do you want to tell me how that affects you and how you've dealt with that? Yeah, it's a, a very odd phobia of mine. Is it's uh, cigarette ends and dead matches. And it's been all my life, really. Certainly, all the children would remember. If we go in a restaurant, the children, if they saw an ashtray, would move it for Dad. OK, that's interesting. So the kids were aware that Dad this was an issue for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, they, and they tried to compensate for that and yeah. protect you from yeah. that. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your memories of Chris's food problems. What was the first you knew about it? I, I suppose up until five or six, Christopher ate most things. I, and then as he got a little bit older, it was obvious he wasn't going to eat fruit or vegetables. So the more choice he had and the more control he had, um, the more he eradicated fruit and veg from his from his diet. I mean, generally speaking, was he a very tidy boy? Was he very really, organised? Really tidy. Uh, that, that'll gain will be something for myself. I like to, things to be efficient. Christopher's ex exactly that way. You don't want to be seen to be out of control, do you? Or? It's po <laughs> yeah, possibly so. Possibly so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Should we go? Okay, Obviously, when Chris was a child. His dad, Mike, was demonstrating phobic behaviour, which unconsciously Chris may have picked up on. But I think what's much more relevant is what Mike said about both father and son sharing this obsession with tidiness and organisation. Now, what I need to teach Chris is that it can be OK to relinquish control, and indeed that sometimes it might even be fun. Hey, good morning, 18 minutes past six. Now, if you're just rising this morning, hope you're waking up well. It's week two of Chris's dietary makeover. Also want to know from you this morning if you've ever confronted a fear or a phobia. He might present the breakfast show, but his caffeine intake wouldn't be Natalie's idea of a good start to the day. I've had four espressos. It's not bad going, is it? By half past six in the morning. No wonder I'm going to die young. This morning, Natalie plans to see what Chris's diet is really like at work and hopefully get something healthy into his body. He has no idea she's coming to see him. Um, Pauline North Shield, Phil in Harrogate, and also, Silvana in Austria. Um, um, right, bizarre moment. Um, um, ah, oh, damn. I'm all flushed. Um, I've actually started sweating. God. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Chris. It's Natalie. Natalie. Hi there. Um, I hear you're setting yourself up to die young and you've already had four espressos. It's been a good show, though, as a result. How bizarre that I was just talking about trying to get over this food phobia that I have. And um, who should walk in but Natalie, the nutritionist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a smoothie uh, for you, Chris, because the espressos are making you shake. She's like a witch, this woman. She, she is. She forces me to do things that I don't want to do. Get on with your job, then. OK, all right. Uh, hey, Chris, uh, play back for my daughter, Jay. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> You can't do that! <laughs> look at this! <laughs> look at this! It's disgusting! You can keep these in the fridge, look, for the rest of the week. You really brought more than one! Brecky on the go. Look at the state of that! Go on, try it. You could try it and have the rest tomorrow. Oh, my God, it tastes much like... It tastes like... Raspberry porridge. It tastes like sand. It's your smoothie bag, present. I can't thank you enough, thank you. There's no need to be so sarcastic. Uh, I will do it. See you again soon. <sighs> I can't think of anyone I'd have liked to see less walk into my studio. Uh, but I know that she's right. That's the most frustrating and annoying thing about Natalie. He's taken a significant step today, but the key thing is to build on it. And as he's managed to drink this blended fruit, I think it gives us some idea of where we need to go next. Chris's childish aversion to fruit and veg has been controlling his diet for 20 years. Clinical psychologist Stephen wants to do more to encourage Chris's adult side to relinquish control. 
Well, what Chris is going to do today is he's literally going to have to put his life in somebody else's hands. I think his eating problems are very tied up with his need to be in control and also to avoid anxiety. You know, Chris believes that the best way to deal with anxiety is to stay clear of the things which make you anxious. What he has to learn is that if he can expose himself to a level of anxiety, tolerate it, get used to it, actually the anxiety level will dip away. I'm trying to put out of my mind what I can see in front of me. Losing the power of speech, because this looks scary. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to my world of high altitude terror. How are you? Um, I was all right. <laughs> Come with me. Let's go have a chat. As you've probably gathered, the reason we're here is because I have a tandem paragliding flight <laughs> lined up for you. And basically, I want you to get your head around the fact that these states may not be pleasant, but neither are they going to do you any harm, all right? Uh, what are you thinking? <laughs> we're thinking about to jump off a mountain. But I wouldn't be sending you up there unless I thought it was, you know, pretty safe, OK? But I'm, <laughs> but you I... need to be 110% <laughs> certain. Though. Nobody, <laughs> nobody can ever be 110% certain. There's always risk. That's what makes it exciting. All right, come with me. How high would you like to go, sir? I'm happy just to sort of skim up and down here a bit. Oh, to OK. Be if you like, what, a couple of hundred feet above the ridge? No, no, I mean, like, literally just skimming across the top of the ground. Chris, good luck. I will be on the end of this, so you can talk to me as well. I apologize for any bad language now. That's good, that's good, that's good. This is the tough bit, all right? Keep going, keep going. <laughs> OK. <laughs> You're doing fine. Oh, my God. Jesus! It is going to get easier as you get used to it. Just ride out the anxiety. Ah! A bit wobbly. So how are you feeling now? I feel like if I was to move slightly forward, I'd fall straight off the, off the whole front of everything. Try and relax as much as you can, all right? Because if you're gripping on for dear life, that is going to keep the anxiety levels up. There's another man here coming to join us on a the thermal. Hi, guys. Oh, <laughs> I think he's doing really well, actually. I mean, he's obviously starting to relax, and I think he's starting to maybe even enjoy it a little bit. Can we get some speed up? Because somehow I've, I've stopped thinking about the height, and you're feeling good, aren't you? I'm starting to get a bit of a buzz from it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Chris, what are your anxiety levels at now? I, I'm actually starting to enjoy this. Do you like this then? Yeah, yeah. We're coming into land. Sorry, Poggles. What? You did well. My legs are really well. All right, just relax. Sit down. Yes. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> that was so cool. That was amazing. I'm really pleased. That was pleased. so cool. Yeah? You look pretty scared when you started. Yeah, it really did feel like I'd, I'd whited out. But once I was comfortable, you just sit there. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Yeah, well, I mean, all credit to you, because you were quite nervous about doing this. Yeah. But you didn't let it stop you. You did it. You tolerated that feeling of fear and the discomfort that went with that. You survived it. Yeah. And it looks to me like maybe you even enjoyed it. Fantastic. You done really yeah. well. Yeah, thank you. I understand the comparison, actually. I'm now starting to get w what he's saying. Like, you can do something that you wouldn't normally do. <laughs> if only the eating of fruit and vegetables was, was as easy as that. The minute he starts to learn that what he thinks about situations isn't necessarily the truth about them, then we've got a little loophole there that we can work with, because that's exactly what he does in, with his food. You know, he's there saying, you know, I know 100% that, you know, this will make me sick, that this is impossible. You know, today he's learned that perhaps what he knows, in that sense, perhaps can't be relied on to the degree that he thinks. Having thrown himself off a cliff and learned to love it, can Chris summon up similar courage to tackle Natalie's next task? Here we go. It's a good start, nothing offensive so far. Ooh, inside this hamper, you will find a selection of delicious fruits. Oh, man. I would like you to place a piece of fruit in every room in your house. That seems a little over the top. OK, so... Oh, I hate it. I'm sweating. OK. That's the first time I can remember ever touching an orange.
So living room, what's it going to be? I think lemon. Okay, dining room, and oh, soft, very soft. Okay, nearly there, and that is pretty much job done. I'm not exactly jumping with joy. My biggest worry is that I've now got fruit scattered all around my house. It's two weeks into Chris's new food regime, so Stephen and Natalie meet up to discuss his progress. This is a really tough one with Chris because not only does he have phobias like I've never seen before, but he's also really cheeky. He's always trying to talk himself out of doing the things that I'm asking him to do. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly what you mean, but I do think he's starting to get his head around what an issue the controlling tendencies are and how that might be limiting his progress. Because I do think that in order for me to be able to make any progress with Chris, I'm going to have to start getting really tough with him. All right, well, in the meantime, I will try and teach him some techniques to calm himself down when he's around fruit and veg. And you never know, I might even try and get him to eat something. Determined to build on Stephen's success, Natalie heads to East Sussex. Her plan is to dangle a carrot in front of Chris with the promise of his favourite tipple. When we first met Chris, he could barely even utter the names of fruit and veg and we need to get him eating a whole range of the things. So one of the stages of that could be actually touching them. So I've got something in mind that I think will make his toes curl. So we're here at the English Wine Centre. This is so sneaky. Why is it sneaky? Because <laughs> you know I love my wine. Yeah, I love exactly. Wine. You see, I'm trying to get across to you that I'm not this evil witch. So what, we're just going to spend a couple of hours drinking wine? If only. No, we're going to go over there, look. I knew <laughs> It's so sneaky. I really, really love wine. And you put this horrible downer on it. Surely any day with me has got a horrible downer it over it. It does seem to be the case. So let's just accept that. Come on, let's go and tread some grapes. Oh, man. Have you got some, like, Wellingtons or, or something? No. Fee, are you scared of touching them? Yeah. Don't want to touch them. It's like an eyeball popping in my mouth. Am I helping? <laughs> right, come on, get your shoes off. I'll go first. <laughs> oh! <coughs> oh, man. Oh! Oh, man. I don't know if I can do it, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. That's first contact. <laughs> Oh, that's grim. <laughs> so hard not to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can feel it oozing. <laughs> One of the worst things I've ever had to do. Look, you need to get oh. yours like that. Oh, it's really horrible. You thought you were going to throw up when you first saw that. I still think it's very possible. And now you're squidging in it. So already, you've made a huge leap. My mind is shifting, definitely. Wheels are turning. No, they really are. At least you can now say the name great, because that was weird. Oof. It was disgusting. You know, the sound alone is vile. And then you look down, and, and that made me want to vomit. But I did it. So, bit. yeah, this is the good bit. I must say, I was really shocked at quite how averse to doing it he was. And then what we saw, he got more familiar, he got more comfortable, he calmed down, and it was OK. And that's what Chris needs to do with fruit and veg on a general scale. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to squishing grapes in your toes. <laughs> nice. Chris isn't the only one with homework this week. Natalie wants his best friend Joe and co-host Becky to help show Chris how appalling his current diet is. Natalie has decided, rather than me take up a challenge, that you're going to be set the challenge. But I'm not the one with the problem. Um, you will be. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look what's in each of those. Oh, great. No fruit and veg to be eaten at all for three days. Oh, God, no. What? 
you eat what I would normally eat or have eaten in the past. Eat? That's my a typical day in my life. This Breakfast, lunch, <laughs> <laughs> a snack and then dinner. So that's your challenge. Good luck. You might really enjoy it. <laughs> Wife Claire gets roped in too and the unfortunate trio soon discover the joys of fruit and veg-free mealtimes. I have to say, it's like eating mostly yellow food. I mean, this is the sort of stuff I remember eating at kids' parties. If it's not a diet, I would bring my own dog up on, that's for sure. How Chris has got through however many years in broadcast journalism, I've no idea. I bet Terry Woven doesn't eat this. I'm feeling quite jittery really bloated, quite constipated, and not enjoying it at all. I'll be really pleased when these three days are over. By day three, Joe's fed up. I think I am uh, well and truly coffeeed out for the day. Claire's struggling across the finish line. But Becky, on the other hand, is thriving, albeit a little more than is probably healthy. I have to say, I'm hyper, really hyper, really a bit <laughs> and have been hyper for three days. And in actual fact, people have noticed how hyper I am. They've noticed that I'm talking quite quickly. But this, this I like. Chocolate has been great. It has been the salvation of the entire three days. And this is going to become a regular routine in my life. Becky might be enjoying her new diet, but with the final challenge looming, Chris is still struggling with his, unable even to accept fruit or veg in his mouth. Stephen needs a breakthrough. You are making some good progress, but I still think that essentially you feel you've got no real control over your reactions to certain foods, yeah? What I want to do today is try and give you an experience of being able to moderate your own reactions to food to make more things possible for you. OK, Chris, come on in. Stephen has an unpleasant surprise right. for Chris as he prepares him for a fruit and veg standoff. All right. OK. So, looking at that lot, what's your reaction? It's, it's not my perfect view. <laughs> You're tensing up again, all right? Just keep breathing. I want, you to, I want you to imagine somewhere where you feel comfortable and relaxed, OK? Can you describe the scene to me? Somewhere... <laughs> the beer garden at my local pub. Yeah? OK, all right. Descri OK, just close your eyes and, and imagine yourself there. Now I want you to hold on to that image, and I just want you to say to yourself, pineapple. Oh! Oh, Chris! <laughs> so close, OK? It's felt incompatible, didn't it? Yeah, right, that's exactly right, yeah. OK, but that's the thing. It worked, the word, it just wouldn't come out. OK, well, that's fine. It's all right, so we do it, we do it again, all right? So close your eyes, put yourself in the beer garden. I just want you to put a pineapple into that scene. It's sitting there in front of you, but this time say the word pineapple, and I want you to say it like it is the most beautiful word you've ever heard. Pineapple. That's fine. OK. Here is the pineapple in question. After Chris goes on to manage a lifetime first by cutting a piece of fruit... I can smell it, can you? Yeah. Stephen tries okay. to tickle his taste buds. All right. What am I doing? Um, what are you doing? I, um, what are you doing? I'm going to do this. Um, it's going to be fine and this it, is going to... It's going to be all right. You're fixating too much on it. OK, that's fine. OK, good for you. Easy, easy, easy. It's OK. It's all right. It's OK. It's fine. It's fine. OK. Hey, no, 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 no. Listen. It doesn't matter. I really thought I could do that. Yeah. Can we give it one more go? If you like. Yeah, just one more. Fine. I think. OK. Picture yourself in that beer garden. Got it. All right. When you're ready... What you see in your head. That's it. Good. <clears throat> easy, slow. It's fine. Relax. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> there you go. Yes. There you go. Good, good start. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let's get out of here. I think, in terms of exposing himself to his fears, this has worked really as well as I could possibly have hoped today. Actually, uh, Chris really seems to have got the bit between his teeth. I've really got more and more determined just to make big steps. At least at the end of any day, I need to have done something to move myself forward. And today feels like, I really feel really good for doing it. I really do. I feel, I feel good. With increasing self-belief, Chris is no longer avoiding Natalie's tasks. Hello, love. <laughs> right, and is even relinquishing okay. a bit of control by enlisting okay. Becky to help. 
OK. OK. Inside the hamper, you will find five different pieces of fruit. I'd like to chop this fruit to make a fruit salad and attempt to eat as much as you can. Wow! You may add ice cream to your liking. That's OK, there's ice cream. Oh, and lots man, of ice that's cream. A, that's a bit much, though. Chris, yeah. you're fannying. Pick up a fruit. <laughs> OK. Great. Get it in there. Right, what's next? Uh, let's do raspberries. Lovely. Oh, slimy. It's good, you're doing really, really well. Oh. Banana. Oh, the smell of... <laughs> you OK? Genuinely, yeah. Uh, that is the fruit salad. I wish the banana wasn't in there. In fact, I wish all of it wasn't in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up with loads of ice cream and I'm going to feed it to you. I think the way that I'd like to do it is have the ice cream sort of separate to the, to the fruit so that I can see what I'm eating so that I don't get any nasty surprises. Don't control what you're experiencing. Let's mix the ice cream up with the fruit. Let go of the control of what you're you about really to experience. Think that's the best thing to do. Yeah, okay, do it. I'm going to eat it like as if it's. Yeah. I'm doing it again now, yeah, I'm just talking about it. It's fascinating. Just yeah. get on and eat it. Yes! Brilliant. Now swallow, swallow. Good. Good. Oh, Brilliant. I think we should put some sort of towel over you, I think, just in case. Take it. Uh, I never thought it would come to this. Come on. I can see the hairs on the uh, on the raspberry here. This wicked. And you're doing it. You're utterly doing it. Can we just leave it at that? Yes, we can. Oh. Okay, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But a bit of fruit and a smoothie hardly constitute a proper meal, and Chris's final challenge is only a week away. With Stephen running out of ideas, he's brought Chris to London's West End for one last shot in the dark. Come on in, Chris. Okay. <laughs> We've come here to a restaurant, but it's a restaurant with a difference. This restaurant is called Dining in the Dark. Oh, man. Man! Come along. OK, Roberto over here is our, our waiter. He's well used to working in the dark. He's got sunglasses on. <laughs> Roberto's blind, yes, which is why he's very well equipped to work in this place. Can I trust you, Roberto? Of course you can. Because I can't trust anybody else around Nobody here at the moment. Stephen wants to force Chris to confront his food fears by desensitising him. He's gambling that for Chris, what he can't see can't hurt him. First course is a frittata, an omelette made with spinach and potato. Ah, I hear the sound of approaching footsteps. Here we are, here it comes. OK, so Roberto has put a starter in front of you. I'd like you to sort of try a bit and see what you think. OK. First thing, the knife's gone down in something squidgy. OK. <coughs> All right, OK. Do you know where your water glass is? Yeah. Why don't you have a sip of water? All right, and calm yourself down. OK, why don't you stick your fork in it and just... It just smells like a sort of raw, stale Chris. almost. Smell. What are you doing to yourself, though? You know, as okay, you describe right. it, do you know, I you're, as you... To, I just don't no, no. like the feeling of being sick. I don't like that feeling. OK, but you're assuming that you're going to be. No more talking. Go for it. Go on. It's fine. Good for you. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What you have just eaten, Mr Hawkins, is um, a uh, spinach frittata. Was it as bad as you'd built it up in your head to be? No, it wasn't. Right, let's right. move on then to the next course. The next course not only has a summer berry sauce, which means there's fruit, it also has a side of cabbage too. Oh my gosh. OK, Roberto. Here we are. OK, try a bit of that. Hang on. It's tricky, this, isn't it? <laughs> OK. Very good. If I'd have presented you with a bowl of Savoy cabbage and said... I wouldn't have eaten it. What about the sauce that it's in? That's so nice, the saltiness. Really? Oh. Summer berry compote. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, it was. Do you know, that would have put... I would never... I know. Oh. Yeah. Wow, OK, yeah. cool. This is yet another big step for me, because I am beginning to think that I could sit and eat, um, you know, pick pick a dish on the menu that I wouldn't normally have picked and just um, enjoy everything that's on the plate. Well, that's fantastic, Chris. I mean, I think if you take nothing else away from this experience, then I think, you know, this could be a real breakthrough. Thank you. Initially, 
I really was absolutely petrified. Yeah. I stuck with it, and I'm so glad I did. And I'm, I'm really <laughs> proud of myself. For normal people, that will seem ridiculous, but for me, it's really great. In the end, he did it. But of course, from my point of view, in order for him to really move forward with this, he has to get to the stage where he's able to do this for himself, on his own, you know, without somebody holding his hand. Over the next week, Chris battles along without the experts. So what's your routine with this, then? I get myself built up into a right frenzy, start shaking, sweating, making excuses. Everything new is a struggle. Oh, no, I know what it's going to be. No, I don't like it. Because when you bite into it, it oozes out and pops. But he slowly confronts new fruits, <coughs> faces up to veggies. Oh, ah, good work and even starts to enjoy himself. I think if Natalie saw me doing this, she'd want to kiss me on both cheeks. It's the morning of the big meal. Hi. Today, Chris hopes to prepare and eat fruit and vegetables. It'll be the first time his family have seen this in over 25 years. Are you doing it with me? Yeah, but you've got to be the man in charge. He's going to have to do all the peeling and the chopping and the putting in the pan. And I don't want any complaining. Four weeks ago, I wouldn't even touch a sweet potato, but now it just feels fine, it just feels normal. It's a bit fiddly. Easier, I'd have thought, to buy it in a pack. Oh. I think I need to work on my technique a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm nervous but excited. I think I've done what I would consider to be almost the hard bit, and that is handling all the, all the vegetables, cutting them all up. Look, the blood from the knife. Oh, night. darling. Do you think I'll be all right? Be OK. I'm nervous, I think, the most about the melon, because it's one fruit that I haven't actually tried yet. I'm already starting to get a bit worked up about it. Yeah. Yes. That's it. If I'm going to sit here, yeah. can we swap those plates over? Because no, I had actually, a slightly smaller one. I know, actually. With more parma ham. Chris. Please. No. Please, Claire. Only if you put the parma ham on the melon. OK? Go and do that now, then. Otherwise, you've failed your challenge. No, properly. <laughs> Otherwise, you fail your challenge, Chris. Good boy. Yeah, I just wanted to have the two separate just because, you know, it's just nicer that way. Well, let's rise to the challenge. Come on. Chris. 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 Yeah. Chris. Good luck with your final challenge. Thank you all. Here we go. Don't stare. No one stares. I know this is the problem. <laughs> thought this was going to be easier than it is. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've done the melon, and I've said, oh, yeah, I'll be fine with the roasted vegetables, I'll be fine with the steamed vegetables. But I gotta say, I, I mean, I'm not fine, really. I don't think. I think actually, I'm a bit more anxious than I thought. Hey, my love, let's eat some food, darling. I've never um, actually seen my plate look like this, so. Neither have I. Kelly, um. It's like watching the monkey. Oh, look at that monkey! I never saw it fail. Right, this is the first Sweden. The roasted sweet potato is nice. Like it? Mm. Yeah, really nice. Mm. I am enjoying it. I was starving hungry, which has helped. That's me doing my office. I'd like everyone to raise their glasses and say, Chris, we're very proud of you. Thank you all. Thank you all for and helping me so much. Your journey. Thank you, Dad. He did so well. And I just, I didn't want to cry. I just felt really. A bit emotional. I just sort of sat back and thought, my goodness, he's really worked through this. He suffered well. with this phobia for probably 27, 28 years, uh, but he's achieved it today and it's fantastic. I'm really actually quite moved by it. I just thought it was brilliant. <laughs> Crying! <laughs> that was fantastic. Really fantastic. I'm just um, a bit blown away. It just felt like a normal meal, except with different food on my plate. And I have to say, I enjoyed the, the vegetables. One month later, and Natalie's back to find out how Chris is getting on. Let's have a look. 
Voila. There's whole salad here. Yeah. Lettuce, cucumber, tomato. Yeah. More fruit. Yeah. Strawberries, grapes. Peppers. You can even touch them now. You Thank even you. said the word. Yes. And You're not running off to wash your hands. No, not not worried at all. I've got a bouquet for you. Thank you so much. That's about what I'd expect. <laughs> Chris still loves a meat feast, but at least now fruit and veggies are on the menu too. I'm really, really proud of him. I think he's come a heck of a long way. We both love food. He just didn't like a third of the food which was served up. And now things are a lot more normal. I can't believe how far I feel like I've come in the last four weeks. It's been worth every single minute. It seems to me like a fairy tale ending. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.